Hello, my Jason. I was my anime review for the Idol Master, and so the 2011 uh, anime adaptation of the Raising Game Simulation of the same name. Uh, basically, in the game, uh, from what I understand, uh, you play this nameless producer, and you don't really see him. So a different twist in the anime where you actually do see the producer. He actually plays a very important role. But you play the producer, you follow along the idols, and you sort of um, do different commands and different. Um, sort of like a visual novel in that, in that sort of sense of, um, you know, building up these characters and, you know, judging uh, what uh, directions they go on. And so for the anime adaptation, it kind of plays in the same way, where you follow uh, 13 girls from the uh, 7065 production studio uh, who uh, wants to develop these top idols uh, in Japan, in the entertainment industry. Uh, there's laughs, there's struggles, lots of other things going on. Uh, the series is directed and written by Atsushi Nishigori, who has a drawing in the Franks coming up in the winter anime season and so uh, for what I've seen in the uh, stills and uh, small images some of the character designs as well uh, looks looking pretty good so far it's a collaboration between uh, Trigger and A1 Pictures um, Nishigori has uh, experience uh, with a lot of Trigger works uh, doing key animation for Kill a Kill working on Little Witch Academia the Enchanted Parade uh, working on Space Patrol Lulico and you know other uh, anime as well did the key animation for uh, Once Super Natural Battles become commonplace the opening thing with that, which is a fantastic opening theme, uh, despite being a sort of, uh, we're in the middle of uh, Slice of Life anime, uh, the opening theme is really well done there, and so Nishigori uh, has a lot of uh, pedigree behind him, and so it's a very interesting collaboration between Trigger and A1 Pictures uh, for this anime here. Uh, this is a one more Pictures uh, anime, and you know, I would say overall for a whole, um, just to put everything into context, there's a two core series, I think 25 episodes in total. It's a lot of fun. Uh, that's really the biggest thing there. If you're into idol anime, you're going to like this one. It's a very different approach to idol anime. If you're into like the school idol stuff of Love Live, different approach where the girls, you know, they are pretty young. I think the youngest is like 13 or 14 of uh, Yayoi. I think she's the youngest. And so you have other ones, uh, they are 15, 16. Um, Asuza, Asuza is uh, the oldest. I think she is of drinking age. I think that's how you differentiate the characters of which ones can drink and which ones can't. Uh, you have uh, 13 girls turtle, th total uh, with Haruka, Makoto, um, Miki, Chihaya, uh, hopefully I hope I get this right, Asuza, uh, Yayoi, um, Takane, uh, Ami, and Mami, the two twins, uh, Yukiho, and you also have the producer, uh, one of the producer, the, the, the producer, uh, you have um, Kultabi, who is also like an assistant as well, and Ritsuko, who is a manager, but she uh, was a former idol as well, so hopefully I, think I got all the names in there. Uh, but the series, uh, if you were to encapsulate main characters per se, because each character um, does get their own shine in certain episodes, especially in the beginning, they do a good job establishing all the characters in the first like three episodes, and so it follows the three episode rule, where you do have uh, the established characters and each character's quirks as well. Uh, Hibiki, uh, um, who is the um, animal lover, Yukiho, she's afraid of men at first, but she eventually comes over um, that fear, she uh, starts getting more confidence within herself, but the main characters, main stars of this anime are Haruka, Chihaya, and Miki. Um, they are always present, Haruka is always present, she's the center of the group as you see in a lot of their performances, and she is the glue as well, she's always the one uh, hyping everyone up, really cheering everyone up uh, whenever everyone's feeling down. Chihaya has a lot of character growth, especially in the second core of the series. Miki is always around, and she, once, once her goals uh, start becoming more clear and she starts working harder, she does become a lot more of a bigger presence in the anime uh, here as well. And so the other characters, they do exist, but they are uh, very uh, in and out in terms of their importance in each episode. And as typical for an idol anime, uh, th there are a lot of cheesy moments uh, here as well. All it's the friendship and and all the things, the interactions with the producer as well. It's a lot of cheesy moments, but it is typical for an idol anime, especially um, with uh, Love Live. If you ever watch that, that's pretty cheesy stuff there. But still, uh, more of a Love Live sunshine, uh, kind of cheesy, where it is endearing and it is fun as well. Not really too cringeworthy as uh, the original Love Live series can be sometimes. Uh, but uh, some of the negative points do come in the second core of the series, uh, where you have um, a rival pr uh, production 
uh, company in Croy. I forget what this production company is called, but the president Croy and Jupiter, another idol group who is getting their own, who has their own spinoff currently as I'm recording this in the Idol Master side. And there's tons of other spinoffs as well. It's Cinderella Girls. I uh, haven't really gotten to watch that as well. Uh, but uh, that those are other spinoffs of the series. Uh, but their subplots was pretty um, terribly handled. Uh, they focused on that too much. Uh, that's where the more like cheese uh, comes in for the series. I was not a big fan of all of that uh, there. I think if they kept the focus on the girls and just, you know, minor things with the rival production studios, uh, you know, the beef, I didn't really buy it. it I really, I didn't really think it was going to go anywhere. It didn't go anywhere. And that was the problem uh, with adding in that subplot. It didn't really go anywhere uh, meaningful, at least for character growth. It didn't really add anything to all the characters. It just added uh, more distractions and more... Um, obstacles, but still, the obstacles didn't really grow the characters, it just really established them even more, and really affirmed uh, their beliefs and their uh, Moe uh, tropes, and so it didn't really add more to the characters at all. But also, with being a lot of fun, it's also very emotional as well, as, um, you know, the Chihaya story, especially episode 20 on the second core of the series, it's really emotional uh, stuff there. From episode 20 to 24, that's really all the emotions uh, after watching the whole uh, first core of the series, we do establish the characters, and, you know, um, sort of spoiler alerts, uh, but at, at end of the first core and the beginning of the second core, they do become more popular uh, because at first, you know, they're in a small uh, studio, um, a small um, like apartment building essentially, and you know they're not really that popular. They're trying to get more popular, that's what the producer's job is. And by the second core of the series, uh, they do become more popular, and so that popularity, seeing their growth uh, from there, from the, from the from the first core, uh, really adds to the emotion, especially with uh, Chihaya and Haruka. Haruka especially, there are some dark moments there. Uh, with Haruka that was not expecting this anime to go and really brought the emotions in. It was really uh, well handled, well written as well. And so I really credit the series for doing that, for really taking those chances that uh, I know anime do. They do go through, uh, just more, mostly basing my uh, opinions on like Love Live. I think it, I mean, AKB uh, 0048 did go pretty dark at times as well, but not as much as the Idol Master, where it's more relatable in that sort of sense. Uh, that's really uh, where they nailed it in the writing uh, for having uh, semi relatable sort of things, just more of a crossroads in your career career or crossroads in your uh, passions and you know really establishing all that there and so I really appreciated that so the directions they went through uh, through the entire series and so for ready for the idol master anime gonna give this one an A minus again some minor things uh, here and there just the cheesiness uh, sometimes can be uh, pretty grown worthy uh, the subplots with like the antagonist per se the uh, president Croy and his group Jupiter uh, not really well handled I and mean, they do redeem the characters which is why they get a spinoff uh, at the end you set up some other spinoffs with Cinderella Girls. I think it's a Korean spinoff as well. And so, you know, they do set up spinoffs uh, here and there. And so, um, those are the only negatives I can really say. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the characters are all well endearing, you know, especially despite their Moe tropes. Uh, you know, you have your Dere days, um, you have uh, other uh, Dere days all over. Just minor things here and there. They don't really beat you over the head over it. And so, I really do appreciate that. But it's still present uh, as well. And, you know, the emotions are real, well, well real uh, for following this character from the first core the second core it really adds to the emotions it's really well done really well paced really well written uh, for all the characters uh, for uh, all 13 girls of the Idol Master anime and so what do you think of the Idol Master or any other Idol anime? Is it your favorite genre? What's your favorite Idol anime of all time? Or just the top three of your favorite Idol anime? Pour your thoughts in the comment section down below. Also make sure to rate and subscribe as well if you have not already. Also, you know, um, share this video as well. It really helps me out. really appreciate all of that. Thank you for watching my anime review for the Idol Master. Who's going to say bye-bye.